shooter. Authorities say the first thing the mass shooter did when he arrived by bus on November 24th was to visit the Hilton, where 10 days later he'd carry out the deadly shooting. According to police, he then checked into a hostel on the Upper West Side with a fake New Jersey ID. That's where they got these photos of the suspect, revealing his face to the hostel clerk. The clerk is reportedly required to compare a person's face with the picture on their ID at check-in. A retired NYPD lieutenant says no doubt the room he stayed in is providing some important clues. The NYPD's crime scene unit can amass a series of forensics such as uh, skin fragments, fingerprints, hair follicles, all of that stuff will be in that room. He says physical evidence will be key in this case, from the bullet casings from the gun used to DNA from a water bottle and a cell phone dropped near the scene. I think that the NYPD actually has an ID on this guy, but they just haven't released that information to the public. Well, the FBI has now joined in this investigation, and they're offering a $50,000 reward. For now, reporting here in News Center, Mary Beth McDade. We'll send back to you guys in this studio. Mary Beth, thank you. The judge has dismissed the second-degree manslaughter charge against Daniel Penny, the former Marine, on trial in the chokehold death of a homeless man on a New York subway. The jury will resume deliberations on a lesser charge of criminally negligent homicide on Monday. That charge carries a lesser prison sentence. Prosecutors say Penny killed the subway passenger, Jordan Neely, a mentally ill man when he held him in a chokehold for about six minutes in May of 2023. Neely had boarded the train and was yelling at passengers and threatening them when he was confronted by Penny. Penny's lawyers argue Neely died from a toxic combination of synthetic marijuana use, sickle cell trait, and mental illness. A 25-year-old suspect has died after a shooting during an armed robbery at a check-cashing business in Mid-City. It happened just after 10 this morning near Venice and Hauser. The LAPD says the suspect shot a security guard who returned fire, killing that suspect. The security guard was taken into the hospital in stable condition. Police say there were three suspects in all involved in the robbery. Two escaped, and they got away with $20,000 in cash and a $1,000 check. New details tonight about the man who opened fire at a private Christian school in Northern California, shooting two boys before killing himself. Officials say 56-year-old Glenn Litton was released from jail in San Bernardino County less than two weeks before the shootings and was taken to Sacramento by family members. Despite a lengthy criminal record, Litton has no history of violence. However, authorities confirm he struggled with significant mental health issues. His victims, five-year-old Elias Wolford and six-year-old Roman Mendez, continue to fight. The local sheriff says, quote, the fact that they are currently still with us is a miracle and something we should all be thankful for. Burglars attempting to break into film director Tyler Perry's L.A. mansion were reportedly scared off by his high-tech security system. The star was not home Wednesday night when TMZ says these photos were taken of four masked men walking through the bushes of Perry's estate. Perry's on-site security reportedly spotted the trespassers through thermal imaging and chase them off property. TMZ also reports that the would-be burglars left behind a backpack filled with tools like crowbars, gloves, a hat, a saw, and a cell phone, all things common in home burglaries. When LAPD arrived, the suspects were long gone. Perry has not commented publicly on the incident. Well, the clock is ticking for TikTok. A federal appeals court panel upheld a law today that could ban the social media app in the U.S. by January 19th. The unanimous decision requires the platform to cut ties with its China-based parent company, ByteDance, or face removal. KTLA's John Finolio has the latest on this social media battle. It's the latest TikTok takedown. The D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals Friday denying the video sharing app's petition to overturn a law requiring parent company China-based ByteDance to sell the platform to a U.S. owner or face a nationwide ban on January 19th. So it's official. TikTok is going to be banned on January 19th of next year for absolutely positively no reason whatsoever. The three-judge panel unanimously upholding the law, citing national security concerns, saying ByteDance and TikTok have a demonstrated history of manipulating the content on their platform, including at the direction of the People's Republic of China. 
more than 170.